Now we move on to the buy low and sell high segment where we tell you who maybe is either for some reason you can get them at a lower value than they're going to be worth in the future and who we can sell high on someone who has extremely great value now that maybe won't continue to keep up that pace. So I'm going to start with my buy low, Paul Goldschmidt, who is having a rough start to the season, was not expected to be this bad. I know he's not what he used to be, you know, in the Arizona prime days. He's not expected to be this bad. So why should I buy him? him? Here's why you should buy low on him. He's going to be traded. He's going to find a new home. And when he does, he's going to rake because he's going to be in a playoff pennant race, whatever it is, late in the season with a competing team that's not the Cardinals. And he's going to be reinvigorated there in a better lineup. He'll probably be sent to a place where he could be in the middle of the lineup. And he's going to start hitting. It's going to that ha- you've seen that happen before, guys. Go to new places where they're in thrust into a pennant race, and all of a sudden they're it's exciting again, and they start hitting in the middle of a lineup where there's better protection and there's more guys, and the lineup is you know goes around more and it's a longer lineup. I fully expect to see that from Paul Goldschmidt. Um, and so I would buy low now on Paul Goldschmidt. I think he'll be better. A, I don't think he's this bad. And B, I think he'll be in a better situation. I like it. I was I was trying to pull up to see is he is his contract over by the end of this year? Do you know? Did you let me let me check that? We got it right here as well. So Paul Goldschmidt. He's a free agent in 2025. So yeah, this is his last year. So I think that's a good call out if, if the Cardinals realize hey. We're not gonna we're not gonna compete this year. We're not looking too good. I think that's you know yeah, there's a lot of potential free agent. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I knew I knew that he was like because I saw his name in trade rumors, so I knew it was either this year or next year. Yeah. And I know that the Cardinals have a guy Luke and Baker who's down in in the minor leagues who had tore it up last year. I haven't seen his stats mm-hmm. this year, but I, I think they you know they have enough guys to to make that work, and obviously they have a plethora of outfielders as well. My buy low is a guy that it's going to make you go, are you sure you're buying low on him? I feel like this is a sell high. And I understand the case for the sell high, but I am not selling high. I am buying high. And that is Christopher Morrell of the Chicago Cubs. Um, I'm buying Morrell because I, I think what we've seen so far from Morrell, he's got nine home runs. Um, what we've seen from him is only the beginning. I really think that he's got another level to unlock. And just by looking at his savant page, you can tell why his XBA is 40 points higher. So he's expected to be hitting 40 points better than his 219 average, right? Um, His X slug is 70 points higher. So his expected slug is supposed to be better than what he's doing. His chase rate is coming down from last year. He's Walking at 11% weight, which is phenomenal. He's only striking out at a 22% rate, right? These are a lot of concerns. The strikeout rate, the high whiff, um, they were just, they were big concerns. And I think people see his 219 average and go, oh, that's just who he is. I actually think there's a little bit more. I think that he could be closer to a 250 hitter. And if you're getting the type of power that he brings, because clearly, I mean, the expected stats are showing, like, this isn't a fluke, right? And we know, you know, if you talked about the the average bat speed, right, or the bat speed, he's sixth in major leagues, right? So he swings the bat quickly. He's, you know, got a lot of pop. He's shown it. He's got nine home runs so far. So I, I fully believe that there's another level for Christopher Morrell. Um, so, yeah, I, I would think you might be able to find an owner who's like, hey, I, I think, you know, this is it. This is his peak. I'm going to sell and cash out. I, I'm, I'm probably buying because I think there's more for him. Man, well, if we were, if only we were in a league together where I owned Christopher Morell because I used him as my cell, as my cell. No high. Yeah, I did. Right. Yeah, with you not here, I used Christopher Morell as my cell high. I kind of did it also because he's a cub, um, and you weren't here. But yeah, I I was totally on the opposite side of that. Sure. Um, you know, like you said, all those underlying stats show you that maybe he shouldn't be as his production shouldn't be as high as it's been. Um, and so. Yeah, no, I, I, I think the opposite. I think his production should be better than than what it's been so far. That's well, what I, I think there's more, and he's got speed. I think you're saying players. though that his production is surprising considering some of the underlying things. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it should be better. Yep. Yep. 
Okay. All right. I got what you're saying. All right. Um, my sell low or sell high. So high, uh, yes. is a guy you mentioned earlier. Sure. Seth Lugo. Mm. Seth Lugo is the number 15 ranked fantasy baseball player currently. In all of fantasy baseball on Yahoo, he is number 15 ranked. 14 guys better than him. That's it. <laughs> like this guy was like what the number 600 ranked fantasy baseball player coming into this year. Yeah, it wasn't I get that it. bad. His 23 wasn't that bad. I know, but I get it. Look, Kansas City, what they've done with their pitching, all that, it's fine. He's not this. I'm sorry. Like, even if for the rest of the year he's a top, like a top 100 fantasy baseball player, he's not the 15th best fantasy baseball player. And if somebody's willing to give you the value of a top tier starting pitcher, because that's what he's been, he's been an ace. If somebody's willing to give you ace value for Seth Lugo, take it and run. Because I, yeah. I just don't believe that Seth Lugo is going to be an ace the rest of the way. Not not like this. That's fair. That's, that's totally fair. I, I, I can't disagree with you on that. I, I'm i a big Seth Lugo fan, but... I'm a yeah, huge he's, fan. He's, but he's, he's not, not a top... Not he's not an ace, unfortunately, I think long term. So I, I think that's a good call out. And that's a good point, right? The sell highs are not necessarily guys that we don't like or, or aren't necessarily in on, but... Maybe they're overperforming, you know, what we think they should be. So I say this every week. Yeah, if somebody's willing to give you value that's higher than what they're actually worth, it doesn't matter. Even if you think they'll be good in the long run, he's not going to have a one six six ERA, you know, and a point nine six WHIP. I mean, he's still his strikeouts are down for what you know it's where you expect them. Forty eight strikeouts and fifty nine innings. He's not getting you a ton of strikeouts. And if those numbers just go up a little bit, the ERA and the WHIP, then all of a sudden it's like, what's he actually giving you? It's not like he's on a team that's going to win a ton of games in Kansas City. So, um, you know, the six and one record right now looks really good if you're in a win league. The ERA right now one six six, best in the league maybe. But mm -hmm. again, long term, I don't think there's a ton of value there. So my sell high is is a guy who's probably not rostered in your league. He may not be. Um, he's rostered in 35%. And my advice to you would be pick this guy up and see if you can flip him or, um, you know, see what you can get for him, you know, pair him with uh, uh, someone else in a bigger trade. And that's Ryan Weathers um, for the Miami Marlins. He's a pitcher for the Marlins. And the reason why is his last three starts have been phenomenal. He's He's got three straight quality starts. Um, where he's thrown 20. You want to know what total. his roster percentage is in Yahoo leagues? It's probably like 5%. 6%. Ten 6%. Yeah. But look at his last three games. Six innings, six it. innings, eight innings, and three, three and zero earned runs. So, you know, not big strikeout stuff. But my my point is like, if if you can get someone to to look at those last three games and say, hey, you know, there's something here. This guy's 24 years old, right? He's still, you know, young and, you know, maybe this is him kind of showing some upside and maybe it is to some degree, right? I, I don't think he's a complete fluke or a complete wash. Um, and maybe, you know, you keep an eye on him as a streamer at some point throughout the season and then try to flip him. But I, I think there's enough value here to, especially maybe in, in 15 team leagues. Yeah, you could flip him for something. I absolutely think he's he's valuable enough to do that. So Ryan Weathers um, is a guy I think his next starts against Milwaukee. I'm not crazy about starting him there, but if you want to pick him up and, and spot start him for some some bad games and try to flip him, I, I think that's a that's what I would be trying to do with him right now. 